this vulnerability is one of the OASP API top 10. I'm talking about broken functionality level authorization. Some people confuse it with broken object level authorization, but they are different. In Bola, an attacker can access objects without proper authorization. For example, by changing the ID number in an API endpoint, an attacker can access other users' details. This is the example of classic Bola. But in BFLA, short for Broken Functionality Level Authorization, an attacker can access hidden functions or endpoints that are supposed to be only for admins. So if you have a look at the OS website for this vulnerability, you can see here are some points given like the best way to find BFLA issues is to perform a deep analysis of the authorization mechanism. Ask this question, can a regular user access administrative endpoints, which they shouldn't be able to? And the second question is, can a user can perform sensitive action, for example, creation of data or deletion or modification? they should not be able to access any function by simply changing the HTTP method. So actually for this video, we are going to look at this second scenario. The third scenario is, can a user from group X access a function that should be exposed only to users from group Y? For example, let's say there is an API endpoint through which an admin can add users to a particular group. Now, if any regular user uses the same endpoint without admin privileges and added any random users to the group, then it's a problem because this functionality was supposed to be only for admins. But even if the user somehow stumbles upon the endpoint that is supposed to be for admins, they shouldn't be able to perform actions unless proper authorization checks and access controls are in place. For this video, I created my own lab for demonstration. We will look at how broken functionality level authorization occur in APIs. I'll show you the vulnerable code and then also what's the fix for it. Well, this code is basically a simple snippet. Of course, in production, the code will be much larger with, with more number of APIs, but this is a demonstration, right? Okay, so this lab has a feature where users can register themselves through an endpoint. And the endpoint is slash API slash register. You have to provide your email and password for it. Now there is another endpoint as well that retrieves your own details. And it is slash API slash user profile. Okay. Now users are only permitted to register. They cannot delete their own accounts. Keep this in mind. Only an admin has the authority to delete any user account. Okay. So let's see how this works. I have two files here, bfla1.py and one lab.py. So first, I'm going to execute bfla1.py. This is a vulnerable code, so it's using Flask. So I'm going to access this endpoint on my local host. To send requests and receive responses, I'm going to use curl. So curl and the HTTP method is post. I'm going to give a header. Content type is application JSON. And then in the data, we need to provide email and password. And then the endpoint that is API register. Okay, so there should be a double code over there in the email value. In the response, we got an access token and a message that says user registered successfully. So I'm going to copy this access token because to retrieve my own user details, I have to give this access token in the request as well. So to retrieve my own details, I'll be using get HTTP method. Then I'll give the endpoint API user profile. And if I hit enter without giving any access token, you can see it says missing authorization header. So we have to provide that. It's a beaver token. And in the response, we can see our own details. That is email, password, and a role as well. That is user. Okay, so this is how this endpoint is supposed to work 
for normal users. Let's try changing the HTTP method from get to delete and send the request. But only the admins were supposed to delete the user account, not any user. This is happening because there are no proper access controls. So I'm going to control C this first and then open the vulnerable program. So this is just a simple snippet for demonstration. Over here, you can see a user's array, which basically contains ID, email, and password along with role. And then we can see the API register endpoint. So this endpoint we can see takes email and password. So the interesting part is below over here, API user profile. So it checks if the user is present in the user's array. And if it is, then it will return the user details. Otherwise, it will say user not found. You can also see that the same endpoint has another method that is delete HTTP method. And this delete HTTP method was supposed to be only used by admins, but there is no checks over here. It's just simply take the token and it checks if the user is available or not. And if it is, it just deletes it. And that's why the user was able to delete their own account. Now let's try to run another lab, the lab.py file. Everything is same, but we will still go through each step. So the first thing I'm going to do is register the user. Same email and password. We got the access token. And it does the same thing. If you don't provide the access token, it will say missing authorization header. Now I'm going to access the user profile endpoint like I did before with simple get HTTP method and I got my user details. Now I'm going to try to change the HTTP method from get to delete. Send the request and this time we got this error, access denied admin privilege required so this time we cannot perform this action because there are some checks that is going on in the background let's have a look at the secure code so i'm going to scroll down to the delete user profile function and you can see it's checking if the user role is admin or not if it is not admin then it's not going to allow any user to delete profile so this is role-based access control and is checking the user role after decoding the token and according to that it's allowing a user to perform particular action. So this is how it's working behind the scenes. I hope this example clarifies your concept. If you want to dive a little more deep into it then you can check out my blog where I wrote the difference between broken object level authorization and broken functionality level authorization with multiple example code analysis and how you can prevent them. You should definitely check that out. And if you have any questions, you can ask me in my Discord server where we talk about API hacking. I'll give the link in the description of everything that I just mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.